Hello, I am John Storm, and this is my second audiobook in the Witch's Wisdom Spellbreaker series. This one is entitled, To the Weirding Clans. I need you to understand the true nature of spellcraft as opposed to the mystical subterfuge. By our definition, a spell is a period of time, sort of like a dry spell, a rainy spell, a dizzy spell, or set a spell where certain influences are brought to bear to accomplish a desired goal. Whether we are speaking of occult forces or influences or psychological, practical, and emotional influences to accomplish these goals or not, we are speaking of the same craft or discipline. We're not so inclined to put things between narrow shutters. This is something that has been inflicted on you by this two-dimensional thinking that I've been speaking of in my previous edition of this. We of this witch clan have honored our ancient vows of maintaining our power of unbroken will and word as well as our relationship with Mother Danu. That's Mother Earth to you. Many years ago we had discussed among ourselves how the world is under such a dark spell and everyone we see and interact with is under this delusion called the American Dream and have absolutely no idea what monsters they are become. So at our Witch Clan website, we invited witches and clan members from all over the globe to discuss how we might use whatever influences we can bring to bear to break this evil spell and to get people to wake up from it. In all honesty, that was already began, be, beginning to happen long before our meddling. But it was too slow and sporadic and everything about it got relegated to the lunatic fringe sections of any publishing houses. We had to find a way to kick this into a higher level. As it happens, there were oddballs in odd places already providing research and materials that were beautifully suited to the task. We just had to find them and incorporate them into our spellbreaker and take our witch war to the warlocks this time around. The feds assaulted and eventually claimed witchclan.com. But we aren't witches simply because we have computers with spell checkers. They certainly help get the word out, but there's still much craft to unload into these bombshells as they can be passed around or lobbed from any direction. So a few more conferences as to whether bippity should proceed a sharp boppity or just jump straight to boo were in order for us. In order to help get a chaotic problem in hand, we had to find a way to help the waking population to grasp certain concepts about their enslavement. It wasn't so much the stigma of altering someone's perceptions without their permission, because, see, that has already been done to a drastic effect. That is what we are fighting with now. We couldn't just give commands and order the zombies around as the warlocks do. Uh, that just makes us more puppet masters, too. They're still our puppets. Uh, we're not any better. No, we had to wake you up and get you steady on your feet. You have your own lives and families to tend to. There's also the question on how to fund this on a Luciferian talismanic monetary system that is designed only to benefit the 13 Illuminist Weirding Clans. Every time you use one of those things, they get a part of its power and we want our spells to sap that power and unseat them. Surely you understand the basis of your present tax system. Forget all the double talking they give you. The bottom line in America is that any time these little green talismans, you call them dollar bills, changes hands, the Luciferian Illuminist elite are supposed to get their cut of that transaction, or it is considered as tax evasion, and you are punished by them. Talismans have always been, and still very much are, an instrument designed by mages of any sorts to give them a specific power. Adhering to this talismanic money system is not designed to make you or any of us, quote, rich, but to make them richer and more powerful. You need to open your eyes and minds to that concept and see things for what they are as opposed to the diabolical illusion. These talismanic dollars have absolutely no value except what an elite few full-blooded warlocks suggest it to you. And as always, they are lying and saddling you with debt and not wealth. 
If I drew an occult talisman on a square of parchment and left it in the open in your church, synagogue, or mosque, nearly all of you would not only not want to touch it, but none of you would see it as a precious thing that you wanted many more of for you and your families. Parchment is tougher than typing paper, which is for wear, even as dollar bills are not printed on typing paper for all the same reason. But your warlock-driven clergy will beg you to dig deep for these, to solve all of our problems with God. Which God exactly are we talking about? You're doing the same things as the true devil worshippers and you're expecting very different results. It's time you changed that approach or how you serve your creator and not wasting your power feeding warlock devils. There are those of us in this clan that know our continuing culture handed down secretly from the public over a few millennia. I presently can't brag much beyond the point of that we got a great many generations of written grimoires, diaries, shadow books, and etc. among us. For the last 1300 years or so it has been very hard to continue owning property and then having to hightail it into the wilderness in the middle of the night to avoid the persecutions, tortures, and burnings. But we were a family and we used all of our craft to eat healthy, make good medicines, deliver healthy babies, and thrive in a world that more and more became unaware of us, and a great many others in their midst and throughout the worlds. We could only exist in a closed society or be murdered to extinction. We pass our culture and craft down only to our own, but for many thousands of years before this, we, that is the many other of the 187 Weirding clans, counseled all of the Celts and Norse in our particular case, you'll find the evidence of this in the runic systems of both cultures. They are only different by a couple different runes and even those runes that they differ are close. That should more than suggest to you that we are talking about the same people, knowing the same thing, just different regions, just different branch of the same family. That, uh, so we are in, you know, had both cultures going. So our clan shared our craft and wisdom with their chieftains and kings. We delivered all, our, all of our healthy babies. We cleaned and bound the wounds of their injured, taught theirs and our children, and fostered them in trade and craft for the benefit of all of the clans. In those days, one swore an oath in a university or in a mystery school to use the craft and wisdom that they learned there for the betterment of their communities rather than abuse it for personal profit. Being, I just kind of want to clear up the illusion of white witchcraft and black witchcraft and good witchcraft and bad witchcraft. You're still thinking in two-dimensional terms. It's bigger and greater than that. We got a 360 degree plus the turnaround in. It uh, doesn't rate that way. Um, Okay, uh, let's see, for the betterment of the community, rather, okay. Being designated as a warlock, an oathbreaker, was never meant to impress or inspire respect and awe. Witches and proper druids and bars put away their personal clan tartans, their gang colors, if you will, for the neutral black or white of the lunar and solar aspects of the same nature-based infrastructure. I don't want to call it a religion where you people start trying to see it through stained glass windows. You know where they talk about Peter and everybody pictures this really glowing, clean-cut fella in this white robe that's crossing the room and his shoulders don't even shake when he moves. He just kind of... And, the, and, and rose petals magically appear where he is walking. See, somebody has just gone and tended, just twisted that shit all out of proportion that you can't see it for what it is. Every time you read something somebody considers religious text, you automatically assume that somebody is worshiping some kind of mythos or something just so t just totally twisted, you know, uh, uh, or they weren't as practical as you are today. This isn't true. Um, you are reading the accounts of somebody who thought it was worth their while to write down what they were experiencing in the context of their own time and culture. Okay. Like I said, 
I don't want to call it a religion. Are you people trying to see it? Keep trying to see it through stained glass windows. Look, those were very pretty and all, but it did not serve anyone well for looking through them. You can no longer see the true light of day without someone else's image imposing itself between yourselves and reality. But my neutral black on black means I don't just serve my own clan anymore, but I serve again all of the clans. Witches don't rule as kings or queens. Historically, we make kings or queens and chieftains or such and negotiate treaties between them all. Generally, when the next person rises in one clan or another, they like to have the nod of the wise ones. And having that gives them more confidence and more benefit even in, in running their own clans. Their, their clansmen can be more confident of them, at least. That's if we're doing our job right and not for profit. But like I said, we're witches, not warlocks. We're traditionally the opposite of what these people represent that you're dealing with now. Okay, uh, when we used our spellcraft, it is meant to aid a singularly individualistic and very highly opinionated people. The Celts to be exact. For the best benefit of all of them and not an elite few. They would, have been, they would have rioted straight off. There's just, it's not a people you can rule like that. Well, they've kind of become that. But this whole thing, is I'm trying to tell you, has been placed upon us all and is very unnatural. And I'm trying to point to exactly where it's coming from. Presently, I'm just offering a little historical catch-up for those of you that's just waking up to the fact that you've been under one hell of a sleeping beauty spell for the last thousand years or so. I do not indoctrinate like warlocks do. I believe it is more beneficial to the children of all of those other weirding clans if I just pointed out some general facts first. You can all check for yourselves in your very own family context and regain most of that power that they have been stealing from all of us. This is me serving all of the clans as we have vowed of our ancient times to do for the benefit of all. My first task was to write a series of entertaining fantasy stories about our witch clan. You'll kind of see the pictures of the covers of these stories in the course of this if you're reading it as a reading or seeing it as or hearing it as a slideshow. Um, those are free. You don't have to pay anything. We don't have to exchange those talismans in any way, shape, or form for you to pick up on what's in them. All right? But in them, you will see the precepts you've heard or seen in other writings or un under very disjointed religious contexts. But you'll see it used practically as we do in our own homes and families. It would show witches and weirding folk in a more proper light. All of the money-worshipping mystics love to disconnect or disassociate you from these topics so that they may continue to beguile you for their personal profit. Our purpose was to shed light on that and let you experience how we see things in their proper context. The greater number of these will be free of money for, for all. With money out of the picture and someone asks you why are you buying into that clever old witch's jive, you can answer that you hadn't paid a dime for any of it and just took it and used it for yourself as you saw fit. When the little lights start coming on, you'll notice more and more other of this craft starts revealing itself around you. Then you understand more about your situation and make better and wiser decisions for an outcome that benefits you more than the warlock elite. It satisfies that it will set their power, and it allows that our multicity of clansmen can strengthen their own defenses. What otherworldly confenses might help us push this spell? The lovely J.K. Rowling was just finishing up on her own witchy fantasy series in book form, and the reading world would be looking for something to fill that niche. Such of our plans was not unknown by the Fed spies, and that pushes that the Fed spies that put witches on their watch list. They passed that on to their warlock elite masters and the website was attacked constantly. I had to spend many, many hours chasing down their hackers and bugs every day to keep it up and running. Even when I had changed commercial servers and paid more for the security, if I went camping for the weekend, it was down before Monday. 
I also had book recs and others uh, available to publish these works uh, for public view. Don't take anything anymore as undisputed gospel, but rather compare it as you can against whatever solid evidence that you may already possess or can find available. If it is the truth, there will be evidence or collaboration of some kind, somewhere close to where it happened. There will be witnesses, and don't try to examine it all in those stained glass windows you've been sporting. Take it out into the light of day and listen to a man or a woman tell you something they found important enough to write down in the language and context of their day and culture. You will see and understand something that you can relate to in a very deep and profound way. If you like the New Testament, for instance, keep in mind that you are not listening to Catholics or Lutherans. You are listening to a combination of Jews and first century pagans and a very, very unusual cast of magi that a great many other magi, more than just three, of the day foretold and saw fit to pay honor and tribute to. Look, if they hadn't intervened, another fallus waving patriarchal devil worshiper named Herod would have killed this incredible person quicker than you could say Merry Christmas. You can believe that. I understand that most of you reading this will be out of the Christo-Luciferian churches. Yeah, I said that right. So it behooves me to point out some seriously great stuff your religious is, religion has been hiding from you that's in plain sight by redefining the terms in this, quote, religious light. Witches don't have any real good reason to hate Jesus, as you have been taught. First century pagans understood exactly what he was teaching, enough to risk their lives to become a follower. You can also believe that. You can believe they considered it long and hard on this issue before committing themselves to it. As a born and bred pagan myself, without all of the bells and candles thrown in, I can find all sorts of powerful wisdom in the pages of a book supposedly owned by my mortal enemies today. Doesn't that tell you something? Don't let the Luciferian priesthood have so much control over what you can see and study for yourselves. I'm not asking you to change your religion to mine or think like I do. I'm just saying you think like I do in that I'm thinking a bit freer than you are. I'm using both half of my brain. You know, uh, uh, I'm not chained by these things, and it doesn't mean I'm going to run off to hell. I got news for you. There's a lot of other directions to run, to, to, to run or just plain walk forward confidently. Religions hold some of the greatest repositories of all kinds of ancient wisdom and power. But the warlocks know how to poison that well so that you cannot see it and lay claim to it without them standing in between you. I am a witch, wise. They are the same word in two languages. Warlock, oathbreaker, is likewise. I also sit in circles to share power. I do not stand in the forefront to keep anyone away from it. We all warm ourselves at a central fire, not me warming myself and coming out to the cold to hug you warmer and pick your pocket for some coin. That is so very warlock, a world you have to pay to live in and claiming that God made it that way. That is the very height of using God's name in vain, misrepresenting it for personal and corporate profit. Do you really expect any of these guys are even going in the general direction of heaven? Here's another hint about warlock relig religious values. I'm telling you this stuff is consistent on many levels. And just about any warlock institution you're going to find, it's going to find out, it's going to work out on levels or degrees. And things are going to take on different meanings as you go from one level to the next. This is their fingerprint. This is in everything they do. The language that they call holy, to talk to God with, Latin. In the context of its history, without the stained glass windows again here, it is a commercial, banking, and academic trade language. It is the language used to do business or share knowledge between the Greeks, the Celts, the Romans, the Turks, and everybody else. Celts like to use ancient Gaelic. 
the old tongue as their holy languages and spells and prayers. The Jews, they like Hebrew or Aramaic, their ancient, and so on with many other ancient languages as their own. But who chooses a trade language to be the, an artificial trade language, to be the holiest and most precious words that they can utter before their God? Vini, vidi, visa, we came, we saw, we shopped. But when the warlock magi aligned with Constantine, hijacked your Christianity and began using the craft to take over the countrysides for their personal profit, these were ancient Babylonian mystery to the point of Luciferian, but a millennia or so before that, they were Promethean magi. So you could say, you could very well say, and be right on the button, that these patriarchal penises were the true dicks or phalluses of the weirding world. In every land they claim, they raised their stone peckers to the sky and wagged their wangs at God Almighty, singing that same old song. How have you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, thou son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. Kind of like chemtrails. I will be like the Most High. I'll know everything there is to know about everybody and have control of everything. There's yet another significant side to that coin, but I'll get to that later. It's not a coincidence that Paul was warning the believers in Thessalonica about those sons of Satan scheming even in his days, that the uh, man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes him and exalts himself above all that is called, quote, God, or, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Without those stained glass windows on your eyes, doesn't that take on a more profound meaning to what we are seeing around us even now? I have to give it to them, though. They, that is, Lucifer's children, managed to pull this off with most of the world on a significant scale during the past couple millennia. But there were only 13 of the 200 weirding clans, Nephilim, Watchers, Fae, or whatever your culture knows us as. Most of you have been culturally separated from your own roots, and until only relatively recently speaking, would you have any Luciferian influences in your clans or families. You have talents that you have nearly no understanding of, or how to put it to its wisest applications, for you and yours. You are programmed to shrink from the very idea that your exposure to such a thing would pollute your souls beyond saving. I'd say that was an honest assessment of the motherfucking, in the profoundest sense of the term, Luciferian warlock golden age that we have all just awakened into. By their dirty, double-dealing ways, they have persecuted, destroyed, and demonized the rest of the weirding clans nearly to extinction and erase the minds of their children to use and abuse them for generations. Even as the evil bastards are doing in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and so many others, and more to come to this very day. Some of you are out there looking for a devil in a red suit with a pitchfork and a tail. And if you look for witches and warlocks in ceremonial robes with wands and stays, there are those things, but in the majority of the times, we are all found wearing very much the same things as you would wear. My iconic view of a warlock is a man in an expensive suit with his fingers crossed behind his back, as if doing such a gesture would keep all of the bad karma his wickedness might bring upon him from ever reaching him. It is apparent that their dark masters are deluding them even as badly as they have been deluding you. They are identified aright when it was said, the lusts of your fathers is what you do. He was a murderer from the beginning and never abode in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it, so much so that when I tell you the truth, you won't believe me. But the truth doesn't need believers. It simply is. 
whether you pull up your blankets and hide from it or not. If you've noticed that some of what I've been paraphrasing to you of in this is simple relative scripture, look it up for yourselves. I understand that it is a group of individual writings that have passed through the hands and has been manipulated by the warlock elite. Remember Constantine and his Nicene warlock cronies canonizing what you can read is of those thousands of different verses of scripture as only just these 60 some odd books here by these 40 authors. But you'll find some of the most quoted scriptures are considered apocrypha. I think you should be reading those too. And just considering what they say in light of what they are saying in the times they're talking about. All right, but still, the multitude of the original ideas and messages are still intact and as true as you have found it in other verses, without the stained glass spectacles on. The rest of that Luciferian pronouncement by Isaiah has this to declare about what's the end of their reign, basically the times you're seeing now. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Yeah, I'm going to be up on the top floor of the skyscraper. I will be like the Most High. I will run your life. How much you get to eat, breathe, the water you drink, what you get taught in school, what you get taught to think. I will be your Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to hell in the sides of the pit. They that truly see you will look narrowly upon you. They'll consider you saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and that did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a poisoned wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? That filled so many prisons and refused to release any of them? All of the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory and state, every one in his own house. But you are to be cast out of your grave like an abominable branch as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot you shall not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned prepare slaughter for lucifer's children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with their cities. Jeez, does this sound kind of familiar? You can find that somewhere around the 14th chapter of Isaiah. Look it up for yourself. You decide how bad I'm manipulating you or whether I'm actually really giving you light to do something with. 9-11, harp-driven stones, storms and quakes, chemtrails, fluoride poisoning, overwhelming fossil fuel pollution, depleted uranium rounds pollution of civilian lands and homes for oil and greed, the serpent, the dragon, reptilians if you will symbolized here, gain all of their power from the dragons, symbolically one way or another, or actually in a multicity of planes, in more than just a mystical way. They are wealthy and powerful on the blood and juices of ancient dragons, fossil fuels if you will. But as long as you look at those truths with the stained glass of religious thought and dogma, you will never clearly see and understand the travesty going on around you and who it really is that is responsible and quote, in league with Satan to do such works as his kind have always been known of old to do consistently. Doesn't it make you feel a little bit crazy for voting for these guys time and again, believing that choosing the lesser of two evils will eventually bring you and your children to something good? Pulling the right hand index finger or pulling the left hand index finger is going to puff a stink from the very same sphincter. You should be able to see and smell that by now. I'm directing you away from the false concepts that you only have two choices as to the correct actions to get back your power from these devils. You always have multiple options for anything. That is the way of the witch, the weirding. If you are or even know of a witch of most Wiccan varieties or even mine, you'll understand that all witches 
all mages are clergy. We are all priests and priestesses of one level or another. This does not mean we gather churches or stuff like that. Uh, look, a traditional witch had their home usually a little bit towards the outside of town. It gives them a little privacy. They could minister to people. You can come and talk about your womanly problems and she can, or they can give you what concoctions you need to kind of get things in order and that without the whole clan knowing everything that was going on. But they didn't take up a collection. There was an offering stone in front of their house. They knew if certain signs were left up, they were basically to leave the witch alone. They were doing something important, needed that privacy. Uh, ladder in front of the door or anything like that in front of the gate would do this. Having an offering stone in front of the house. If you, your wife gone and just made three good pitchers of meat and this, I well, you know, you've been tending to their sick and everything. You get one of them. They leave that on the offering stone, you know, which then leaves the pitcher back again. And somewhere else, somebody brought, hey, I just uh, just harvested uh, three bushels of corn. Uh, I'm gonna throw a few ears to the wizard here. And, uh, that's how that worked. We ate, we were kind, we gave of ourselves, and the clan gave of themselves to see to our, our needs for eating. We didn't have to pay for our houses, they didn't either. That, uh, you built them and you lived in them. What you made, you, you got for yourself. Nobody stood between you and it. That is warlock paradigm. Trying to get you away from that. Back into the witch. Okay. No. If you, we're all witches, all right. So this is true of warlocks as well. Don't fall for the illusion that just because they are using the Lord's name and are clergy, not just the Christians either, it doesn't make them anti-warlock or any less likely to be Satan's own service servant in this filthy paradigm. Regardless of whatever holy symbols they wave at you, if Luciferian occult talismans, paper currency, are involved in the worship or ministry in any significant indispensable way they are by their very deeds and focus mammon worshipers and you've already been told by the master that it is nearly as impossible as getting a camel through the eye of a needle as it is to serve both God and mammon so thinking a thinking and committed follower of the true God I don't care what you call yourself is not going to allow a bunch of hallelujah singing zombies pollute their personal walk or relationship with their maker. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has a long, long list of her iniquities. Wise people don't sit in their pews on the railroad tracks knowing the karma train is just around the bend and coming hard and fast. If any of the wisdom I have shared with you has moved you in any way, then move yourselves the smartest ways you can find for your own well-being and safety. As Solomon said, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together. God is maker of them all. And a prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. But the simple pass on, and they're punished. This is how my family survived so many centuries of this persecution. And I am here and now to teach you that little survival skill for this dark time. To all of the weirding clans and their descendants, it is my intent for all of you to regain your own power and use it a right to change this status quo for the benefit of all of Earth's myriad of clans. I already have most of my power back and I share mine as my kind of sworn of old to see you all standing in your proper places at the end of this foul paradigm and onwards into a much brighter future that we make for ourselves. I inform I warn, but I do not lead you. I bring light in a much truer sense than Lucifer's to set you free of the darkness. I diminish the warlock's power that yours may be increased manifold. But you use that light to direct your own steps wisely, 
the Creator does, does indeed love His bright and unique souls. That is true. You can find that for yourself. Neither I nor anyone else is required to tell you how. You simply need the tools and the freedom to make those very personal determinations about your paths for yourselves. I am only a slightly elder brother in all of this in doing what any good brother would do for his siblings because I know it is the right thing to do and this has nothing to do with my faith. I have light to see and not walk blindly as your preachers might suggest as they direct your life's efforts to their own uses. Now, so do you.